Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video explaining the work of Davis and Moore on education. In this series we've already looked at the work of Emil Durkheim and Tolkott Parsons and today we look at another functionist contribution to education, that of Kingsley Davis and Wilbur Moore. As part of their wider research on stratification in society, Davis and Moore suggested that education serves the function of role allocation. Davis and Moore suggested this in the 1940s but it still has lots of relevance today. They argued that society needs a skilled workforce to deal with the increasing demands of 20th century capitalism, but also that the higher positions in society should be taken by those with the correct attributes to move society forward. At this time in history, the US was facing an ideological war against the rise of communism, particularly in the Eastern Hemisphere, and by promoting these values of meritocracy, it was in direct opposition to the more egalitarian approach of communism. Davis and Moore suggested that schools were uniquely placed to prepare students for their future roles based upon their ability. So, how does education achieve this? Firstly, it sifts and sorts students based upon their abilities. Those with aptitudes for science are persuaded to go down a more scientific route, whilst those with greater interpersonal skills are shifted into roles that will lead them on to success in people management. The education system also promotes ideas of social mobility and meritocracy. Achieving good grades is based upon natural ability and hard work. Students are rewarded for these academic achievements with higher status jobs requiring academic rather than vocational qualifications. And this leads to the most academically gifted students being given higher status and placed into higher status roles such as lawyers, journalists, chief executive officers. While students who show skills in less important roles for the economy will be given lower status and end up in lower status jobs, usually in manual or unskilled labour. The most obvious application of this for contemporary society is setting and streaming. Students are sifted and sorted based upon their perceived ability into different sets for subjects or can be limited in the subject choices they have based upon their academic performance. We can see further evidence of this through the university admission systems, UCAS, with offers made to students based upon their predicted ability in a subject area. Conversely, students who show little academic ability are often shifted into a vocational course where they may achieve a vocational qualification, such as a BTEC or a T-level, and go down a career path with the lower status. Of course, this impacts on the earning potential of those students with greater wage inequality between those of higher status and lower status, between skilled and unskilled labour. So let's look at some of the criticisms. Well, naturally, Marxists are critical of role allocation and meritocracy, suggesting that meritocracy is a myth-making machine, designed to reinforce the traditional roles of middle and working class students. They also argue that promoting ideas of meritocracy helps to legitimise inequality because it shifts the blame for failure from the education system to the individual. The, low, the student with a low status didn't work hard enough, they weren't talented enough, when in reality there are far more barriers for working class students to overcome in order to achieve, such as material deprivation and labelling. Similarly, feminists suggest that too much emphasis is placed upon traditional male professions, particularly the sciences and engineering, which leads to gender pay inequality because female dominated industries such as education and nursing are giving lower status despite requiring a similar level of education to the male dominated industries. It can also be argued that meritocracy often comes second to social capital. The old school tie network is no more evident than the higher status roles such as politics with many privately educated students entering parliament or having close links to those in the seat of power. This is further underlined by the higher levels of entries into Oxbridge and Russell Group universities from those who are privately educated. I hope that explained the function of role allocation in education as proposed by Davis and Moore. Thank you for watching.